Hello. Welcome to the Infinite Game. I know you may not know what that means yet, but I invite you to find a nice spot to sit down, relax, and ready your mind to absorb this profound life philosophy. If your mind is running fast, if you have somewhere to be in the next hour, I'd recommend choosing to watch this video at another time in which you can really absorb what is being said here so you can really see the infinite game for what it is because once you see the infinite game for what it is once you have tasted the freedom joy beauty love and sense of purpose that playing this game provides you will never want to stop playing so here's the deal you're a human i'm a human and the primary game that we are all playing from the moment we are born is the game of how to make survival, how to make our temporary existence in this meat suit most meaningful. But in doing this, you can either play the finite game or the infinite game. And in order to understand what the infinite game is, you will have to understand the finite first. And finite games are pretty simple to understand because virtually all games we typically imagine are finite games. That is, the game has a set of rules, a clearly defined beginning and end point, and most distinctly of all, someone wins and someone loses. In terms of our modern society, think of a sports game, working towards a job promotion, acquiring X amount of money, acquiring a certain kind of property, etc. These are all finite games, and to play a finite game is to limit oneself within the boundaries, the specific pathway that leads to the winning of the game, whether that prize be a physical reward, money, or some sort of status symbol that recognizes the player as the worthy recipient of the prize. And while these finite games can be very fun, thrilling to play, infuse our lives with meaning, improve and advance ourselves, they can also hurt both our lives and the lives of others when we become entranced with this finite mindset of viewing everything in terms of successes and failures of wins and losses. On a more individual level, when we become entranced with a finite mindset, that could be something like we are so focused on getting as much money as possible, on getting that job promotion, or trying to win an intellectual debate, or ranking up in a video game that you develop this sort of tunnel-like vision on winning, and when you do this, you set yourself up for suffering from short-sightedness, lose the ability to see the big picture of your life, and not just of life, but the big picture of reality, and with this, you can fall out of touch with your purpose, miss opportunities for growth, create conflict in your relationships with others as a result of seeing them as competition or as a way of hindering, your chances of winning the game and with this entrancement you can also just experience unhealthy levels of stress and anxiety that slowly eat away at you and on a collective level when large numbers of people and organizations are strongly operating from this finite mindset the playing ground becomes ripe for birthing dominator hierarchies which is a hierarchy in which those in the higher rungs of the hierarchy exert control over those in the lower rungs using them as pawns in but another finite game and as a result those lower on the hierarchy are often not always because not every person in a position of power uses it in a dominating way but i would say most do to a degree and very often this leads to those at the bottom of the hierarchy in some way being bullied belittled abused and in the worst of cases dehumanized think of slavery imperialism various corporate hierarchies and the state of modern capitalism as the average ceo making over 800 times the amount that the average worker makes and also just think about how the richest one percent of the world over owns over half of the world's wealth and with so many people seeking the maximum or if not maximum some sort of enormous financial gain for themselves and whoever they identify with whether that be their families their organizations their nation it comes at the expense of others at the exploitation of people and the environment as a means to an end in this finite game which on an organizational level will lead to things like laying off employees giving employees less work and which leads to less pay and also giving workers so little pay that they essentially become a wage slave 
And you could also lump sweatshops into this, how many companies outsource their production to poor countries in which they work in inhumane conditions, make extremely low amounts of money and are barely surviving, and in situations where people need to work long, hard hours just to meet their survival needs. What you have is those at the top of the dominator hierarchy making those at the bottom of a hierarchy dependent on them for their survival, giving them just enough to get by, but not enough to be truly powerful, not really enough to give them a chance to move up the hierarchy and better their life situation, but rather just enough to keep them in their place, just enough to keep them in this loop of working for them just to survive, to keep them as a pawn in their finite game. All the while, the CEO is floating around in their yacht and talking about how the working class just needs to pick themselves up by the bootstraps and just work harder and they wouldn't be so poor. And these types of phrases are thrown around all the time by people who feel righteous of and deserving of having more, of being higher on the societal hierarchy than other people. And I really want to emphasize that in all of this, I am never devaluing the importance of individual responsibility and hard work. Everyone ought to be taking individual responsibility, but when individual responsibility becomes every man, every family, every company, every nation for themselves, rather than being individually responsible for the well-being of all, we create the modern capitalist dominator hierarchy. And no, I am not saying every person deserves to earn the same exact amount of money, but I would like to have us working towards creating a society that divides wealth more evenly and ensures equal opportunity to all. This is part of my vision of the infinite game. You know, you and I can both agree that a CEO making 800 times more than the average worker is way too much money. And really, I believe we ought to be working towards a society that is free of wage slavery. Again, this is part of my vision of the infinite game, which you will learn about in a second here. So hopefully these examples shed some light about how finite thinking creates a world of winners and losers, of haves and have-nots, which perpetuates a struggle of those within the society to always be striving to have more, to be bigger, to be more powerful, and how that leads to those who do have more, who do have more power to dominate over those who do have less, so that those who do have less keep having less, and so that those who do have more keep having more it's a loop. This is the state of humanity, and it is caused by playing the finite game, which really, at its core, is none other than selfishness. But here's the thing. A different type of game exists. A game that is not played for the purpose of winning, but for the purpose of continuing the play. A game that is not played within a boundary, but towards the horizon of whatever we can envision. A game that is played with others rather than against others. A game in which one does not have power over, but power with. A game played in the name of love, rather than self. Author James P. Kars called this the infinite game. And the infinite game can only be played by someone who is willing to let go of the money, the prizes, the status, the titles, and the other seductive, egoic gains that come along with winning finite games. And those who are entranced in the finite game cannot even imagine playing the infinite game because they see life as meaningless without the rewards, without the personal games that come along with winning. But in the infinite game, we recognize that meaning making is a tool that can be played with and we can infuse life with whatever meaning brings us the highest joy and highest excitement. And in fact, a question that needs to be asked prior to playing the infinite game is, what is the most meaningful thing I could possibly do with my life? So rather than telling you in a straightforward way what the infinite game is, which is difficult to do because it is highly abstract, highly complex, and is largely played outside of this egoic self-consciousness that we spend most of our lives in that has caused us to always be playing the finite game instead. So. Rather, I am going to describe to you nine characteristics that, that infinite players have that allow them to play the game to its fullest, to experience the most joy out of life, and create the most societal harmony. So, the first characteristic of the infinite player is that they have an ultimate vision, which is created as a result of their why in life. If you don't have a vision that inspires you, touches your heart, 
invigorates your spirit, and is powerful enough to make you want to work your life towards a cause, then you are not in infinite game playing shape because this vision, this purpose, is essentially your compass. And if you don't have a strong compass, a strong purpose, then inevitably the mind is going to veer off course and get sucked back into short term, pleasurable, egoic, finite thinking because finite thinking is precisely what occurs when there is no long term vision. So in developing your vision, really dive deep into your mind and try to imagine a future state so beautiful, great, grand and high that tears might literally come to your eye. And your vision needs to be bold. The bolder your vision is, the better. The point isn't necessarily to completely bring the entirety of your vision into reality. The point is not to end the game. The point is to get infinitely closer to reaching your vision, but never actually getting there. So you end up playing the game forever because you love it so much. And I know this seems abstract, so let me provide an example. One of author Simon Sinek's visions are that essentially he wants to create a world in which every person goes to work safe, happy, and inspired, and ends their day feeling fulfilled. You see how that's a vision where you don't ever really fully actualize it, you only get closer and closer to it through hard work, through living your vision every day. That's the type of vision we have here in the Infinite Game. A few key points of my vision are that I want to help create a world in which the exploitation of humans and the environment for profit are seen as completely alien and that businesses are defined by how they serve, not by how much they profit. I want to help create a world in which the success of a society is not defined by how many jobs it creates and what its GDP is, but just by how happy, healthy, fulfilled, and conscious its citizens are. I want to help create a world in which adult development is recognized and encouraged by everyone, where communities and institutions aid in the self-actualization and the self-transcendence of everyone, no matter their age. I'd also like to help create a world in which the most looked up to people are the most wise rather than the most rich and powerful. I think society would be much better off if we were watching reality TV shows on the day in the life of a monk or something rather than the day in the life of the Kardashians. And really all these points I've just made here are just finite markers in my larger infinite vision which really at its core is just rooted in increasing love and cultivating a more enlightened consciousness within humanity which again is something that really isn't going to be fully actualized at least not for many 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 lifetimes into the future so in developing your vision ask yourself what is this world like what are the inhabitants of this world like what do they do with their lives what is the reason for living what is the government like what is the economic structure be as detailed as possible and while you should just let the information of this video just seep into your relaxing mind for now at a later time set aside time to contemplate these questions and i would highly recommend going out into nature to think about it and when you do set aside time to contemplate make sure you write down the vision and also regularly add to it when you get new ideas because getting the thoughts into physical reality dramatically increases their potency and reduces the risk that in time you'll forget about your vision so dig deep contemplate explore dream big find your why and generate your vision because without this it will be impossible to play the infinite game and this leads us to the second characteristic of the infinite player which is that in the infinite game all moves are made towards the horizon so once you have your vision your purpose for playing the infinite game the next step is determining your part in advancing the cause ask yourself what are your unique attributes strengths talents and abilities that you can utilize to advance your cause what product or service or idea could advance this cause remember in the infinite game there are no boundaries the only limitation are the limitations of your imagination and when your sights are set on bringing something so grand bold and idealistic into fruition every move made within the game is made towards the horizon towards the future towards the endless possibility of what can be so contemplate what your part in the coming to fruition of your vision is and make moves accordingly the third characteristic of the infinite player is that they are a player of culture not of society this is because the infinite game knows no boundaries so an infinite player will have to play beyond their society, which is a boundary. 
And because a society has boundaries, that is, it has a dedicated area of play, it has borders, and it seeks to have power over, maintain its influence, and uphold a certain social order, and desires to mold a certain worldview into its citizens, it is a finite game. Essentially, the power of a society is determined by its wins against other societies in large-scale finite games, such as war. And as a result of victory, the citizens of a society win prizes, such as land, new frontiers, protection, power, recognition, a flourishing economy, increased quality of life, increased influence of the society's values, etc. And those who desire permanence of these prizes become patriots, also known as nationalists, who seek to keep the prizes for themselves, which really ends up coming at the expense of others. And very often, the most patriotic people are those members of society who benefit the most out of everyone in society. So in addition to being nationalists, patriots may also be racists, sexists, and classists in order to maintain their status. And as said earlier, this is the birth of all struggle in a society. It is the reason that a society's number one threat is not in its clashes with other societies, but with the growing culture inside its own borders. And the infinite game is a movement of just that. The infinite game is a movement of culture, precisely because culture is always changing, its rules, norms, trends, and values are constantly in flux and know no limits. Because think about it. If people were to continue the societal script over and over again, the society would be very culturally impoverished. Life would be boring, and it would probably be horrifyingly authoritarian too, and nothing new, moving, groundbreaking, and innovative would come to be. So whereas a society is defined by its boundaries, culture is defined by its horizon. The horizon of whatever we can dream up, envision, and imagine. And for this reason, it is fair to say that the infinite player is a player of culture, not of society. The fourth characteristic of the infinite player is that they become an inhabitant of their future state. That is, they don't simply work to merely change the external aspects of the world that are out of alignment with their vision. This is because the infinite player recognizes that to change the exterior is to simply change an appearance. And what is really needed is a changing of the interior, which is to expand the vision, motivation, compassion, love, care, and intelligence of the vehicle that creates the reality, which is you. In other words, the infinite game is a game of personal development, becoming someone with the consciousness that can actually bring the vision to reality. For example, if you want to say, end the exploitation and oppression of all humans, you must first see and transcend the oppressor in yourself. If you cannot eliminate the oppressor in yourself, you're never going to make a lick of change in doing so elsewhere. So really imagine what the consciousness of a person which inhabits your future state is like and seek to be that. The fifth characteristic of the infinite player is that they have an acute awareness for their desire to play finite games. I don't think Simon Sinek could have wrote it better when he said, maintaining an infinite mindset is hard, very hard. It is to be expected that we will stray from the path we are humans and we are fallible. We are subject to bouts of greed, fear, ambition, ignorance, external pressure, competing interests, ego. To complicate matters further, finite games are seductive. They can be fun and exciting and sometimes even addictive. Just like gambling, every win, every goal hit releases a shot of dopamine in our bodies, encouraging us to play the same way again, to try to win again. We must be very strong to resist that urge." End quote. In short, it is incredibly difficult to break free from finite thinking. We are all naturally hardwired to seek the easy solution to our problems, and the quick, immediate reward we often get from doing so only reinforces us to act the same way again. So you're going to fall into finite thinking often, I know I do every single day. And remember, finite games are not inherently bad. It is when we become entranced by the game that, that consequences arise. In infinite play, finite games are still played, but are just taken less seriously and more playfully. This is because one's awareness of the ultimate vision prevents them from becoming seduced by the prize of potentially winning the game. So, when we notice ourselves becoming entranced, it is important to take a deep breath, to take a step back, and ask, is this really what I want to do? Is this in alignment with my vision? 
Is this who I truly want to be? More often than not, this will be enough to expand us back into the infinite mindset, but if you find yourself completely unable to let go of your finite ways, don't hate yourself for it, or completely deprive yourself of something you see as a need, sometimes karma needs to be burned through before it can be let go of. Whatever you do, operate from your highest wisdom. The sixth characteristic of the infinite player is that they welcome surprise. You can take it as a general marker of whether one is playing the finite or the infinite game and how they react to surprise, because in a finite game, the goal is to defeat or outcompete the opponents. So therefore, one must be able to predict, meet, or have a counter for each move the competition makes. If a finite player ends up surprised by an opponent's unexpected move, their chances of winning decrease dramatically. But on the other hand, in the infinite game, there is no drive to win to outcompete others. There's just the game, there's just your vision, so each surprise reveals a new potential future, a new potential way of playing the game, which makes the game all the more interesting and exciting to play. So to provide an example, a finite-minded organization whose goal is to be the best and to make the most profit will be both surprised and suffer when new, innovative technology from another company swoops in to steal their market shares. But if the same organization was playing the infinite game instead and had the goal to be better and keep improving in whatever they do, they would welcome the new innovative technology and see it as a way to improve their company and to realize their vision. So I guess the main takeaway in all of this is that if your vision cannot be held up through various political, economic, cultural, and technological changes, then the vision was not created with an infinite mindset. The next and seventh characteristic of the infinite player is that they play in complete openness. I find author James B. Carse to be wise in regarding finite play as theatrical because one must essentially take on a role and put on a performance in order to win. The basketball player puts on the performance of attempting to score more points than the opposing team. The corporate player puts on the performance of being the perfect employee so they can get the promotion. The finite-minded corporation puts on the performance of maximizing financial gain. And people become entranced in this finite play because they want something, a reward, to maintain a public persona, or some other form of selfhood. But in the infinite game, one is not playing as a means to an end. They play for the joy and excitement of playing, so they play in complete openness. Infinite players are not operating within any boundary, so their self-expression is not limited in any way. With this, we can say that infinite players are authentic. Of course, it is easier said than done to be fully authentic as our mind unconsciously creates boundaries all the time in order to protect itself, but if you are seeking to become the best infinite player that you possibly can, the growth you undergo will naturally expand your consciousness, capacity to love, capacity to open, and capacity to express yourself as you truly are. The eighth characteristic of the infinite player is that they oppose no one and welcome everyone. Infinite players play with others, not against others. Therefore, the actions of other people are not simply opposed, because to oppose an action of another would be to take a position against them, and this would be to have a fixed set of rules, assumptions, and boundaries for how the game ought to be played. So, when an infinite player encounters evil such as racism, they don't simply oppose it. They may not like it, but they don't oppose it. But rather, they see the present situation as but another piece in the game to realize their vision. And so rather acting in opposition, they initiate actions of their own that causes others to respond by initiating acts of their own. In short, infinite players are aware that evil only comes about through trying to eliminate evil in other people. That is, having a set code of what is good and what is bad and enforcing it on other people. Remember, Hitler and the Nazis believed that they were eliminating evil and they were, that they were doing good. And so infinite players recognize not only the likelihood of evil, but also the necessity of it in the process of human evolution. And so rather than just trying to eliminate evil altogether, they seek to recognize the evil in themselves, choose to act differently, and through their own embodiment, inspire others who come join the infinite play. Infinite players know that not everyone will want to play their game, but they welcome all who wish to participate and invite them into the promise of ever-expanding vision. For this, the infinite game is a renaissance, a collection of people united in a vision of infinite expansion. 
And the last and perhaps the most important characteristic of the infinite player is that they let nature take its course because at the ultimate level there is only one infinite game and this is life itself. It is God, the universe, source, the one, Brahman, whatever you want to call it, engaged in the endless cycle of creation. We as humans are a part of this creation and play an active role in it, and you, as the infinite player, get to decide what you want to call forth in this creation and devote yourself to bringing it to fruition. Of course, finite players decide what they want to call forth too, but they do so largely unconsciously. Finite players are not concerned with the whole of creation like infinite players are, but rather they use their creative potential to call forth a reality that is played as a means to an end through a narrow, constricted, egoic lens, creating a world of winners and losers, of haves and have-nots. With this whole of creation in mind, infinite play is really about letting nature take its course, because infinite players realize that there is zero separation between themselves and the universe. There is a sort of getting out of the way element to the infinite game, that is, quieting the ego and letting creation move us unobstructed by the ego's wants, which are finitely minded by its nature. So at its core, the infinite game is about getting in touch with who you truly are and becoming who you truly want to be. So I invite you, I invite you to make a conscious effort to start striving towards the infinite mindset. With this mindset, we work to create a world that maximizes human potential and flourishing. With this mindset, we cooperate in bringing people self-chosen, genuine, authentic, long-term interests into a more harmonious, more healthy, and less divisive society. With this mindset, we transcend the exploitative, win-lose mentality of old in favor of a new, inclusive, win-win mentality. With this mindset, we play for the benefit of all rather than for the benefit of a few. And it will be difficult. I am not denying that. We are far from perfect. We are fallible. We can all be selfish to a degree. But through keeping the whole of creation in mind, staying rooted in our visions, looking towards the horizon, and shining the light of awareness on our finite ways, and choosing to act in accordance with what we truly want to create, we will all improve as infinite players in this infinite game, and the world will become a more peaceful, harmonious, loving, and less divisive place. If you would like to read more about the concept of finite and infinite games, I would highly recommend checking out the books Finite and Infinite Games, A Vision of Life as Play and Possibility by James P. Kars, and The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Kars' book will lay down the general theory, and Sinek's will apply the theory to modern-day practices of business. Daniel Schmottenberger's various talks that you can find on YouTube also touch on this theory a little bit. And a final word before I go here is that I want to emphasize just how idealistic this theory is. And I know I am repeating myself here, but the reality is that it is impossible to go from a finite to infinite mindset just like an on-off switch. We humans are selfish, greedy, and actually need to have a finite mindset at times in order to survive, depending on our circumstance. In the current state of our world, we very often must see and view reality as a means to an end or we will literally die. But one gets closer and closer to an infinite mindset through a process of vertical development. Vertical development is the process of developing a more holistic, expansive, sophisticated, and complex way of relating to self and world, and as one vertically develops, their sense of identity expands. So you go from egocentric to nation-centric to world-centric and, and so on. Through this process, you become less selfish and more selfless in your thinking and behavior. Vertical development occurs through several stages, none of which I'm going to mention here because that will require many videos in the future to adequately explain, but I will be making videos on that, so do stay tuned. But what you should take away from this is that in your decision to become an infinite player, you are making the decision to always work towards embodying an infinite mindset while simultaneously recognize you are fallible and many slip-ups, both necessary and unnecessary into finite thinking, are inevitable. I just wanted to emphasize that again. So that's all I have here for today, guys. I have an intuition that those who resonated with this video resonated very strongly and those who did not resonate were very against it and have already clicked off by now, but 
If you were one of those people who resonated very strongly, please, please, please share it with someone else who you also think would resonate. It's through the sharing of this stuff that collectively we are going to evolve our consciousness and actually start embodying the infinite mindset on a collective level. So thank you for sticking with me to the end. If you would like some guidance in crafting your vision, living your vision, or any other aspect of life purpose, consider booking a coaching call with me. The area of life purpose is what I feel most adequate in helping people with. I believe a great attribute I have as a coach is the ability to ask you deep questions that get your mind thinking in new lenses and new pathways that it hadn't before, which can lead to an entirely improved, fresh, livid life down the road. If this resonates with you, please head to the coaching tab of my website. The link is going to be in the description for that. And that's all I have for today, guys. Have a great day and peace.